deep sea, what? yeah, but it was past a thousand meters, but I don't think it was quite this deep. Oh, okay. Zoom in, Dave. I think there's another squat lobster in there. Yeah. Really kind of one per, you know? Yeah. You see like too many multiples in these Chris gorges. Another Amphidicella. Primnoid. Large Primnoid. Zoom in, Duke. Very brightly colored Astro Schema of your woods. Bridge nav. Uh, we can continue three zero meter or zero five zero. Large polyopicon. And a bamboo whip. Does it stop? Lepidices. Yeah. Is it living? Can we zoom on this, please? Zoom in, Dave. This one looks a little bit more bamboo-like to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. But also a little more unhappy. Down low, up high, I guess it's looking okay. Oh, the tiniest crinoid. <laughs> Um, That's this looks internodal. Good shot of the skeleton, yeah. Sponge. 
What were the tulip uh, stock sponges called? Um, the ones that looked look like, like tulips on stocks. Oh, um, Hylostelus? No, Hy the one that starts with the A, the uh, the Amphidicella. 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 Great name. Well, another pseudo happy bamboo there. Wait, how do that you pronounce? That one I think might be permanent. Oh. oh, the one to the side is yeah, that bamboo. One. Jules, how do you pronounce the one that's the tulip sponge? The name? Uh, Amphidicella? No, no, this the one that oh. was more elongate. Hyalo stylus. Hyalo stylus. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Is that the one you meant? The tulip uh, looking one? Hyalo stylus. I don't know what the tulip looking one is. <laughs> they all look like <laughs> yeah. flowers to me. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. I'll be more specific oh, with my flower to spend babies. Large pollen. Keep giving you all my pens. pencil. <laughs> I gave it back, I swear. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Is there a fastest growing coral, or all of them pretty much they grow slow, or slow growing? Slow growing. I bet we don't have a lot of information on rates for corals oh, down at okay. these depths. We do have some information from looking at cross sections of their skeletons uh, because they do have growth rings, but that doesn't necessarily. That tells us how much they grew each year, but it doesn't necessarily tell us how much they grew, like, in comparison to other corals. But overall, Bridge everything in the deep sea is slow growing and lives a long time. Um, so some of these corals can be thousands of years old. Yeah. There are different metrics too. You can have the calcification re rate on corals measured, but that's only for uh, scleritarians and hard corals. So octocorals and such, I don't think they have that yeah, measurement. You can, you can calculate it? Yeah. Yep. Um, there was... Um, some research done on Nautilus some years ago by a woman who was looking at um, growth in, um, in deep sea gorgonian corals. That's interesting. Science, can we cue a, uh, a fish sighting, please? Yeah, hold on, let me. <laughs> <laughs> be coming up. It's getting a little slow up here. Ooh, boulder. I predict that we will see Eridogorgia. Oh, look. Two. And a flex sword. <laughs> <laughs> Have a crystal ball back there. <laughs> Signs <laughs> point to yes. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a crystal ball or a magic eight ball? <laughs> <laughs> 
Potato, potato. Hey, there's a fish. Try again later. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, yep. It works. Queued up. It worked. Of course it worked. Wait, is this like the day that Jules manifested cheeseburgers? <laughs> what do we <laughs> Quick, wish for something good. <laughs> well, tomorrow's ice cream day, so we don't need that. True. Donuts? Tacos. Tacos. Oh, taco donuts. Taco donuts. <laughs> Wait, does, does, does this mean you're the fish king too, or we can't no, carry two no, titles? No, no, I just, okay. we, the urchin kingdom has good relations with the fish kingdom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another fly trap. That looks like a sock puppet right there. <laughs> That's Yeah. You finish your numbers. Look at this primnoid little happy zone here. Ooh. Very large primnoids. And a bolosoma in the background. Maybe your background. And your background. Oh, yeah, I see. We do have a question for our Atalanta pilot. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just why? Well, uh, so, chat is wondering how does cable stretch influence the responsiveness of the ascents and descents control? I am thinking about when at bottom and you have to make fine adjustments. Taco Calyx. Ooh. Cable stretch and control. Um, is a really good question. I'm looking at tension to make sure that we're not uh, stretching any of our wire inside the 6-8 cable. So uh, we do have our our sets where if we start getting above a certain tension, uh, we need to take warning just because we could potentially damage the electrical and fiber optic cables with inside the 6-8 cable. Right. Um, but it's also trying to play with the heave as far as like fine adjustments. It's uh, coming in, watching the delta, uh, and just trying to adjust to make sure that uh, we are staying clear of Herc, but also giving Hercules enough room to maneuver around while down there. Because the, the delta is, yellow. is never really a number, right? It's a range that changes with the heave. Exactly. Awesome. So it's State of mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that there's still plenty of uh, maneuverability for Herc to to roam around down there uh, without pulling tight on Herc and having Herc also uh, be subjected to the heave of the ship. Neat. What do you got for this one? This is a bamboo. Really? Yeah. A yellow bamboo. Yep. Bridge, Nev. We all live in the yellow bamboo. <laughs> We're going to add three zero meters to zero five zero. I think it's Wait, um, Karatoi said night S1. I don't see clade. any bamboo sections. Oh, wait, maybe right there. I hope that answered the question. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. Let me go up. You can see a little more. Yeah, on the tips. Oh, there so what is characteristic in this coral to be a bamboo coral? Um, the base is bare. There are some nodes, although faint. Um, the branching. Lights. And also. Vibes. Vibes. <laughs> it's always a dash of vibes. The gut feeling. Yeah.
Yes, chat. The polychaete that we saw 15 minutes ago is a sea mouse. Thanks to our friends online for the ID. It's definitely my first sea mouse sighting. Me too. Mm -hmm. Ever? Ever. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mostly work at like mid ocean ridges, so they, you know, no sediment. Hmm. Oh, a cup coral. Solitary sclerotinian. I just have this feeling like we're going to see a bamboo whip really soon. It's just this Can you gut turn feeling. to port, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sense is getting stronger. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would have been other port, though. What is this? Ooh, dramatic focus pull. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're looking like right straight down on it, so that's kind yeah, of hard. You can't the plane of focus is yeah. always shifting. Mm, actually, this is Bolasoma. Pack Manny. Bridge, no? We can add uh, three zero meters to zero five zero. Adam, is your thinking for next steps when we get to the top of this uh, slope here to make check an out attempt? This little yeah, if we can make an attempt for that crater situation. Cool. Any uh, early thoughts on what this could be? What this feature is? Uh, They're kind of far-fetched, but... Ooh, more bamboo. We like far-fetched here. Karst. Oh, ho, ho. that is pretty far-fetched. You want to explain Yeah, yourself? sure. In carbonate <laughs> uh, environments, you can get uh, dissolution of the carbonate by water, creating caves. So folks oh. in the southwest U.S. will be familiar with it because sometimes... <laughs> giant holes open up <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the land. Um, but, yeah, this should be a big carbonate platform. So, uh, you know, who knows? It could be just the way the reef grew. Uh, could, be, could be anything. It's worth checking out. Cool. Could that happen um, anywhere, or is it specific to a region or place? Uh, it's You have to have kind of carbonate. Um, bedrock, you know. Mm. Yeah. That looks like another bamboo. Can we zoom on a yellow guy? Yellow fellow. <laughs> Gosh, it looks like it arms broke off. Yeah, it really does. Oh, 
Oh, I see the, I see the nodes. Mm -hmm. Swallow your nodes. Nodal. Oh, yeah. Ooh, uh, internodal. Internodal. Yeah. Like solidly internodal. Looks like a like square in the middle. Definitively <laughs> internodal. It's true. We're good here. Thank you. And what's the coral on the side, Jules? Uh, that is a perm node. Thank you. Genus unspecified. <laughs> no problem. Yesterday was traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, it's a new coral. And I was like, oh my god. And they're like, no, it's Calyptrophora. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> they all look the same. <laughs> and then we were like, calm down. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of how it goes. <laughs> Ooh, are those what still are we looking at? Yeah. That's a Sacocalyx sponge. It's dead. And Aww. those are zoanthids growing on it. And there is a Chrysogorgia. And at its some base. hydroids. It's got a lot going on. And this is a, a question from chat about um, the coral bleaching. Uh, can non-photosynthetic coral experience bleaching in the same way as photosynthetic corals can? Mm, it's interesting. Can you repeat the question? Um, can non-photosynthetic uh, coral experience bleaching in the same way photosynthetic coral can? Nope. No, mm. not in the same way. Because they don't have the... the they don't have zooxanthellae to right. expel. Right. They can absolutely be damaged by the effects of climate change. Um, most have calcium carbonate structures. Um, and when the pH increases, it, it basically dissolves right. calcium carbonate, which in turn makes the surrounding water more acidic. So it's sort of this like positive feedback. Thank you. Adam, how do you feel about a little zigzag to get us into this? Or would you rather just go to the edge of it, I the eastern edge of it, and then zigzag if it's interesting? Show me your zigzag. What's it look like? Well, we could, yeah, so we could zigzag that way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, actually, I think we're gonna have to go up a little higher and then do the zag. Oh, okay. So maybe we get up. Up to the top? Yeah. <laughs> I've just been throwing Sacco Calyx out there. Yeah, because the reciprocal is like 300. Oh, perfect. Um, Paula, could I have your pencil again, please? Yep. Bridge nav. Thanks. Thanks. Three zero meters, zero five zero. Three zero Another bamboo and some brim noads and another yellow bamboo and another. <laughs> Can you age a sponge? How, how does that work? Um, there are ways that I am not super familiar with. Right. Okay. But I will do some digging. Okay.
Ooh, right. We're corals. definitely seeing more, more life, which is really good. Yeah. Can we zoom on this, please? That's a perm node. Okay. Thank you. Apparently, you can use radiocarbon dating. Oh, it's interesting. So you can't, and then that's one of the questions. So based on, you can't age it just based off of the size of the zoanthids? Uh, no. OK. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, size is not a very good indicator of okay. age. And then any ideas of what could have caused the death of the sponge or just in general as well? Um, it, it could have been nutrient mm -hmm. availability. Um, oh, look at that pattern around the rock. Yeah, it looks cool? like a Japanese oh, wow. garden. Or yeah, that's, yeah <laughs> that's the current kind of getting deflected by the rock, yeah? Neat. Adam was right saying uh, 1300 on deck time or? 1300 on deck, yeah. Okay, great. So we'll come up 1145 right before our watch ends. Yep. Oh, yeah. Another fish. Uh, sorry, we did not request you, fish. You have uh, <laughs> 10 minutes until you are <laughs> You're not on yet. <laughs> <debut>. <laughs> So 11.45 is when we're off bottom or what? Off bottom, oh, right. Okay. Can we look at that coral and the sediment behind the rock, please? This one? Yes. Which one? Thank you. Oh, right there. More purred up to them. Cool. Look out, fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to back right into oh. that thing. Oh, oh what? It's <laughs> going in reverse. Oh. It's it's not very good at parallel parking. <laughs> Is there any better feeling than totally nailing the parallel parking on the first go? No, no better feeling. I've yeah, never felt more joy. Yep, I agree. Mike, you grew up in Hawaii, so you must back into every spot. <laughs> 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 that is like a complete Hawaiian thing to do. It's like my uh, my giant truck, I'm backing it in. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. It makes it leaving easy. <laughs> Parallel it's, park. I it's mean, just tsunami preparedness. You right? got so much... Uh, you know, street parking that you got to get good at pillar parking. Has anybody right. tried a car that does the self park thing? Oh, mm -hmm. where it kind of goes sideways? I don't like it. Or I just like no, I like parking. Have you tried a car with you like no. parking? Auto parking? I thing? like parallel parking. I've got like, I don't know. I like doing the like the hole in one where you just. That's what I'm saying. In. That's a great yeah, feeling. It's like such a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little strange when like I get out and I like pump my fist. And, you know. <laughs> like you conquered. Yeah. <laughs> I used to drive a lot for work in Chicago, and whenever we'd get to the site that we were working at, I would parallel There's park, and people would applaud. Nice. <laughs> and it was so good. <laughs> my vehicles are not fish. Uh, wow. amenable to parallel. No, parking. yours are not. I'm, <laughs> yeah. But has anyone tried a, a auto park situation? I have not. I, I you have can't not. Parallel oh. park your truck. It's hard enough to park your truck just normally. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What's how big's your truck? Ginormous. It's an F three fifty dually diesel. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I can barely see the road. <laughs> Adam, you grew up in Washington. What's it like parallel parking a ferry? 
a fairy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you learned on, right? Yeah, yeah. And, what, and that's why I moved to Woods Hole, because they got fairies there, too. Oh, I see. <laughs> Actually, my neighbor is a fairy captain. Really? Oh, wow, yeah. that's cool. And, that's so uh, neat. And it can get a little Same hairy place, when it's windy out. Or if the ferry loses power. Or if the ferry loses yeah. power. Ooh. And it's, it's also complicated down in Woods Hole because the ferry dock and the hooey dock moving. are right next to each other. And so you got to, like, watch who's moving when. Another proto to one. Okay. Washington State Ferry just ran aground a few weeks ago because it Yikes. lost power. Uh-oh. Mike, when you were captaining, captaining the Ever Given uh, through the Suez, <laughs> can you tell us about that experience? I have a hard time going back from that one. Oh, it's man. been heard online. It never leaves you. <laughs> <laughs> we're good here. <laughs> that has got to be so embarrassing. <laughs> uh, there's just a, a lot of questions afterwards and <laughs> sometimes uh you know as much as the uh, captain can try and do there's just there's a failure with the uh, like say with the washington state losing power and uh not uh not being able to get back up in time to to maneuver yeah to be so clear for people watching at home mike has <laughs> not never, run never captained a cargo vessel <laughs> No. Or a ferry. <laughs> or a ferry. <laughs> Survey vessels. Uh, scientific vessels, yes. It's a really large bamboo right there. Cleared your name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK, I think I will do a bit of a move towards zero, 030 zero next. Oh, then, oh I, know. I like what you're doing here. Couldn't do zero four zero, and now you're gonna do zero three zero. Oh, our headings changed. What's wrong with zero uh, three zero? Nothing. That's oh. why we're gonna do it. Okay. I gotta get in the lab today and describe some rocks. Yeah. We have a lot of a lot of rock samples today too. I know, I am feeling behind, you know, we gotta clear out some of the old ones. Ooh. Actually we'll start with zero four zero. It'll work right. It's like we I have think another you can do the S one Zero three seven. <laughs> the previous bamboo coral? You know yeah, the Kertois Edna S1 clade. 030. Kertois Edna. Let's go. Uh, different <laughs> clade. <laughs> <laughs> the current's also slightly dropped, which is good. It's getting a little high. Maybe you could put a little joy buzzer in Dave's seat. Mm -hmm. Just push a button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like a pager. <laughs> Large bamboo cord? Yeah, I think that's a uh, Keratois Edna B clade. Look at me learning clades. Go oh, Yules. Never thought the day would come. I'm actually really not positive about that clade. Well, don't learn them too hard because they seem to change them every couple of years. I don't. Yeah, the bamboos are all different now. I don't know what's going on. Okay, good. This is internodal. Bridge, no? That's another thick star. Fish. Three zero meters, zero three five. Oh, she went halfway. I took it out. She went halfway. <laughs> <laughs> so is that starfish causing all this damage in here? Um... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Does look like it's 
It looks healthy. well fed. Sure. Um, could could be contributing factor for sure. Starfish are known to eat coral. Really tall Chrysogorgid. Yeah, that is a tall one. Can you do the song, please? Chrysogorgid, Tuniculata. <laughs> Thank you. It's more of a jingle, really. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good jingle. <laughs> it's based on a Dead Kennedys song. We got any ah. Dead Kennedys fans on the chat? Oh. California Uber Alice. There's a very well hidden spot lobster in there. There's always a squat lobster. And our chat is asking if we can do t shirts saying Zoom in Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm in. <laughs> and Dave gets a shirt that says, I'm Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that video would be Dave. Awesome. <laughs> Just video yeah. Dave. Video Dave. I'll be opening my Etsy store next week. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> This is a really cool Chrysogorgia. It's very dark. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jules, can you um, tell us what is marine snow and maybe why is it so thick here? And does that tell you something important? I know there's a lot on our wa last watch. <laughs> um, yeah, so marine snow is organic matter that has fallen through the water column from the surface waters. Um, it is basically like dead, dead organic matter, like poop and decaying things. <laughs> the shells of tests of organisms and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Larvation snowhouses. Um, so marine snow provides nutrients for organisms like corals. Um, Corals are filter feeders, and the ones in the deep sea are um, fully reliant on filter feeding because they don't have an algae symbiont. Um, so in higher flow areas, there's more food availability for these filter feeders because there's more water going through them with food particles. Um, and the amount of marine snow it might have to do with flow. It might have to do with what's living at the surface. Right. Uh, it could have to do with larger ocean currents because the stuff we're seeing here isn't necessarily from like straight up in the water column. Like it's not going to be from directly above because things are shifting a lot. And so. on some other watches i think some of it can be due to the, just the rov moving around that's true right. upset of it, but not this watch <laughs> <laughs> not this yeah watch. not us though never this watch Trap. Yeah, we've Ooh. seen a couple of them. On a Oops. dead bamboo. Oh. A tiny. Someone nearby is stirring up a lot of sediment. <laughs> Must be Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> It is right above us. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> picking up everything. Look at that. Oh, wow. A gaping maw, as you put it. I hope we see more of the thick Holothorian. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> I love that thing. <laughs> it's glorious. It's bridge nav. I think that's our watch highlight. Is it? Yeah. It is for me. Yeah, it is yeah. me too. 
so majestic. <laughs> Let's add three zero meters to zero three five. I love when it like tried to like bend back and gets right. halfway and, and it was like, getting ready. It. it was just like getting ready to. <laughs> <laughs> there are reenactments happening back here. Are there? Yeah. Nope, not. <laughs> Wait, somebody, somebody needs to draw that for our art gallery. Okay, I can take a stab at that one. Against my better judgment. Oh, I'm gonna do a version <laughs> too. We got any Let's more post-its? Yeah, oh, sure post-its aren't there. I'll, I'll right here. So we have more post -its. Anyone else wanna take a stab? Where's the uh, subject? Uh, Halotharian uh, expulsion. I'm good. Okay, you can check <laughs> this box. <laughs> <laughs> Reenactment. Samantha, I love that picture that you have. Of Mike looking at the. <laughs> 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 First pilot picture. Yes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Just scaring things left and right. <laughs> Sprays for that. Okay. So from chat, are sea pens and bottle brushes in the same genus? How to tell them apart? What are bottle brushes? That's the Chrysogorgia. Oh. Oh. Um, in the same genus? Genus. Or no. How, and how to tell them apart? So no, no chat. And then how do we tell them? Um, they actually belong to different families. So, well, okay. The sea pens have, there's been a lot of changes to the taxonomy recently, but... Um, they are Penetalesian, that's the order, Penetalesia, um, and then Chrysogorgids belong to the family Chrysogorgidae. Ooh. Um, they are related in that they're both Cnidarians. Um, same class. Can I see that bag of pens again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jules. Oh, can we age um, the coral samples up here? Do we have to wait for that ashore? That's not something that we could do on board. Right. A lot okay. of the analysis happens um, back on shore. Um, they would they would have to. Well, there would firstly have to be someone interested in doing that. So, if someone requested corals for that purpose. Um, and then, you know, someone with the technology and capabilities to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, chat, I do not mm, timestamp. Ooh, look at that whip. Ooh, Victor Gorgia. We saw the Holothurian last night. Yeah. 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. watch. Yes. Not one, but I two. Don't, yeah, two. two. Right. I don't have the timestamp. I do. It's on you the do? photos. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Stand oh, by you're doing chat. it from the photo? Well, oh, that was smart. Not quite. I'm doing it from memory. Victor we'll Gorgia or Pogo Plexar it's Jules? Uh, it's Victor Gorgia. All right, Samantha, here you go for the wall. <laughs> oh, already? <laughs> you know, I can show it to everyone first? Oh, that is very special. Why don't you show that to everyone first? <laughs> Honestly, and on the internet, too. Camera. <laughs> oh, nice. Oops. Oh, that's impressive. Right? That's, right? that's okay. great. It has shadowing and everything. <laughs> I like we don't get a live yeah. A little chiaroscuro on there. <laughs> It's oh, you didn't want to hold it up for the science camera? Oh, there? Here, hold on. There we go. That's good. Oh, wow. <laughs> Almost like being there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
got a new pen when you need one. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, we have a viewer. Uh, their daughter wants to know, this is an interesting question, because of marine snow, if whales can have dandruff? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> That's a kind of. I like that question. Um, because all organisms are kind of constantly shedding bits of DNA. Right. Um, so it might not be dandruff that you could see, but it is kind of like like your dad's dandruff. <laughs> Just assuming. <laughs> uh, you know, it's stuff that kind of comes off the, the body. Right. So. Interesting and good question. I like that one. I wonder if whales get itchy and what do they do? Oh my god, that oh. would be miserable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I hope they don't get itchy. I really hope not. Well they do have whale ice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh what? And it's one of the theories that people have about why they um uh, we'll jump out, yeah, breach yeah. and then smash back down. Oh, and just take care of oh yes. a yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that could scratch an itch. Nice. All right. Yeah, so I see some of the it's belugas up in the North Sea kind of scratching themselves on river rocks. Hmm. Well, so then I do hope they get itchy because having an itch and scratching it, that feels pretty good. So it when does they feel pretty good. <laughs> So it's really That's majestic when they breach, mm -hmm. but they're just scratching. No, wait, I don't think I would go so far as <laughs> to state that as fact. <laughs> what is this one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's go. Who let's is this? Go. <laughs> it's a let's go drawing. The three let's go. I really think we should get one of those from everyone on this watch. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, so too. Mental nice. impressions. I like that one. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> Expulsion. Oh my, David has eyes. All right. Can you switch back to the I cam back? Eyes. Oh no, sorry. Getting Dave from both angles. Bridge nav. Prim. Let's do uh, three zero meters zero three zero. What do we have there? There we go. You're good. Uh, Prim Noah. Yeah, your your oh, camera's yeah. up. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, look what I'm touching. Oh, that's gross. I touched it. I touched it. <laughs> oh, Chad is asking, haven't we seen whales rubbing against the floor too on your expeditions? Has that happened? We I haven't seen the, first. the act of whales doing that. We've right. seen scars in the sea floor left by whales. Um, oh, wow. But that's more likely that they're scooping up sediment off the seafloor oh, and then filtering okay. out a uh, little krill and other critters that live in the, in the dirt. Awesome. The sediment. Oh, cool. cool. Thank you. Specifically, we saw those in the clarion Clipperton fracture zone. Um, and there's a paper out by Lee Marsh and some collaborators. Uh, Lee was a science manager on board Nautilus. Um, she led that study. Super interesting. It wasn't an area that um, people were familiar that this particular type of whale was commonly found in. I can't remember the species, but. Lee's cool. Where is Lee's she now? In the UK. I actually have some um, felted wool deep sea animals that I started making for her daughter when her daughter Aww. was born in 2019. <laughs> and I have them on board because I need to finish them. <laughs> <laughs> I have some toothpaste tablets that are black that she gave me. Oh, like the little charcoal tablets? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing, but a great way to travel with tooth toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Ch 
chat, Atalanta has not chat. permanently replaced Argus. Argus is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Argus is Once fine. Again, Argus is fine. That's what I would say. <laughs> Argus was not fine. But it, Argus is fine. I'm just saying. <laughs> Mixed messages. <laughs> oh, the fish. It's 15 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> Pay's getting You're docked. getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this does look like the top. Ooh, maybe we'll do a push core once we get into this sediment a bit. Oh. No push cars taken on this dive yet. Okay. Is that something we'd like to do? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I just want to be in a bigger field of sediment. Mm -hmm. Well, we're coming up on that field, I believe. Yep. So what, what do you got in this move still? 14 meters. 14 meters. Let's let that play out. and Maybe before the next move, we'll give it a go. Roger. You could use a DVL oh, or use that too. Oh, cute. All right. Bring that camera back. We got a new. Let's see. Can you see it? <laughs> new oh, submission it's a, chat. It's a stop motion. Did you cover up my camera? <laughs> not that I know of. No. <laughs> no, it's not working. Oh, interesting. Oh. Well. Where's the other camera? Right there. Over there? Yes. Oh, there's one right, right up there, too. That one is not active. It's sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Redwood City, yeah, California. Thanks for tuning in. Too Didn't dark. See that. Too Redwood dark. Redwood City. That's where I bought my boat. <laughs> it's there, but it's really dark. Yep. There's some good marinas. This looks like a great place. All right. You awesome. going side poke? <laughs> Excuse me. You side, want side poke? I don't know if you're if you're. <laughs> I don't know if you could do it. Oh. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Poking the bear now. That's the old, uh, doesn't even work on my kids anymore. Like, <laughs> no. I don't think you could rake those leaves <laughs> if you tried. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, no, I couldn't. The ship is holding here. Well, I'm sorry, the science, the science camera has gone away. Oh, oh no. Oh. What's happening? Oh. Continuing my streak of uh, losing cameras. That's the fourth one in three days. Palmyra, oh. we're getting closer. Oh, man, I'm telling you. That's weird. I need some, you want to switch the cameras over? Yep, you ready? Sample cam. Have we taken oh, uh, any on the skin uh, samples? Get off yeah, of we have. Oh, yeah. three so far. The, so uh, yeah, there you go. You want bucket cam on or just the starboard rail? Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> mm -hmm. can you switch the salvo back over? Yep. Robert likes as many views of those gauges as he can get. <laughs> longer do we have chat we will be returning to port the following week we're out here for 29 okay. days I'm going on our third week 
Mm -hmm. Sample mode. Yep. Sample salvo. Uh, how many? How many? We're just gonna do a couple. A couple, huh? yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. There we go. Can you push... The oh, wait. We have fluffy stuff in there. Do we? Uh -huh. We have a rock and a chrysogorgia clip. Oh, uh, so maybe secure the thruster mm -hmm. before we... Potentially. Okay. Ooh. Thruster secure. All right. Uh, push that a little bit. I can't do it when it's okay. all tucked in. Okay, sample tray out just a little bit. That's good. Okay, I'll stop. I think salvo would be a good word of the day. What does salvo mean? I am now confused because we talk about it in terms of hitting a button that changes cameras. I always thought it was yeah. like an exchange of fire or something like that, like a military term. Yes. Dave, you got a salvo definition? For you betcha. Okay. <laughs> so salvo is a military term and refers to firing a number of guns at once. Uh, oh. And in our case, we use it to uh, to talk about firing a bunch of uh, takes in the router. So rather than pushing a button and saying, take this camera, another button, take this camera, another button, take this camera, it's a macro, essentially. So, so it's a button button. That's a, well, we no. have to enable the button. <laughs> but it's a buttons button. <laughs> button. So uh, we set up uh, what is essentially a macro. Uh, and and we uh, hit the button for that, and it does a whole bunch of stuff all at once. It's a button eliminator. Mm. Oh, shout out to Louisiana and Brazil. We have students tuning in. Nice. Hello. Thanks Hello. for tuning in. Thanks for um, being with us. Ah, oh, dang oh. it. Oh, still there. Yeah, we lost. It's it. gone. This button thing needs to get resolved. Button, button. Are you sure this wasn't Atalanta just stirring up <laughs> sediment? <laughs> yeah. How do you resolve the button thing? Uh, Kraft is sending us some new buttons. Great. The science camera's back. Eerie. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Fixed itself somehow. You did come over and jiggle something. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my whole, whole salvo career of jiggles. My whole career summed up in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> what does Dave do? Oh, he comes over, he jiggles something. <laughs> Looks like some pretty good penetration there. Not very satisfying. No. Unfortunately, some of our scientists yeah. are, oh, you know what? Not gonna work. Bail.
need a core catcher. Straight in the wrist. Never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. in the awkward grab now. Yeah. I suppose that's one of the uh, challenges of like an automatic homing kind of thing where you pre-programmed the uh, stowing is like you have to know exactly how you have it grabbed. Assemble tray coming back in. That flap doesn't look very healthy on that one. Right? The uh, what? Hmm? The rubber flap on that tube core. Doesn't look, it looks like it's kind of flipped yeah. up some. Yeah, that was our problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it was, it, I think it was Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> that? Atlanta pilot. <laughs> great view, by, by the way, with the ripples in uh, Atlanta Cam. Yeah, it looks great. You guys ready to go back to dive salvo? Yeah. Fire the salvo. Pew, pew. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Okay, well, well, continue. Yeah, you need one more in this direction before we... I would like that, course. yeah. Okay. But we can make it a big step since it uh, looks like we're in flatter here. Yeah. Bridge nav. Let's do five zero meters zero Pretty three zero. Correct, thanks. Where do we have people Just joining us from? Cam. Yeah. Um, one, let me check it out. <laughs> <laughs> My Shout out to all instance. of our viewers. Thank you for tuning in. We have our friends from all over the United States, Canada, UK, Germany, Norway, Netherlands, Italy, 
Denmark, Brazil, Belgium, Sweden, Portugal, New Zealand, Indonesia, Spain, and oh wow, um, Estonia. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh wow. What's up, Estonia? Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you have any questions, and send them in the chat. Our team Zoom, um, is happy to answer them for you. No squat lobster in there. Or just a is shrimp. That a shrimp? Um, yeah. Can you actually zoom on the coral in front of that? Yep. I think it might be a black coral. Yeah. Front porch of pathies. Front porch of <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. chat why don't you tell us what the best breakfast food from your country is oh that's a like pop nice. question chat <laughs> Sorry, the Jules best Boa's breakfast food Lily Lily in your country There's a 24-hour IHOP near my house. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. <laughs> and I don't think that counts as the best. <laughs> Jules, food. but the most original 24 hours, breakfast. Though. 24 from hours, right? <laughs> from yeah. Boston. That's <laughs> regional. That's <laughs> 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 just a local as a guest. Victor Gorgia. Victor Gorgia. An odd placement Victor for it. Victor Gorgeous. Victor Gorgia, what are you doing here? Actually, does Boston have regional breakfast foods? I don't know, like a cannoli? <laughs> uh, Not a no breakfast food. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I think it's for all of the U.S. So. Just all of the U.S. Classic American breakfast. I think that's what we have on the ship, usually. Chicken bread steak. We have really good biscuits breakfast. and gravy. Oh, I love yeah. biscuits and gravy. Oh, yeah, that's one of the answers. Yeah, that's one of the that. answers from <laughs> chat. No. Oh, I thought we were talking about just spam moussabi. Good. And then <gasps> we have yes. <laughs> we have oh, yeah biscuits and gravy, um, waffles and ice cream. Oh, oh. waffles and ice cream. Oh, um, chicken and waffles, brunch. We have porridge. Porridge. Smoked salmon, eggs, Benedict. Oh, bougie. Oh, that's okay. Wild. There's there's Let's this go. one <laughs> breakfast menu. <laughs> and then chat says the best breakfast food is leftover pizza. Oh, that is I support oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Something. yeah. I'm down for any and of breakfast burritos. Oh yeah. yes. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> Always talking about food. Um, there's this one breakfast place in Somerville. It's called the Neighborhood. And someone told me that I have to get cream of wheat there. And I was like, that's so random. Why would you tell me to do that? But it's really good. Like, I'm not a porridge person. This is the best cream of wheat I've ever eaten. There must be something in it, though. Lots of butter, some sugar, cinnamon. Uh. So if you live in the Boston area, shout out to the neighborhood. They have really good food. Do you want to zoom here, Sam? Oh. I guess that hey, You been said made. cream uh, of what? Cream of wheat. Oh, that's interesting. What is that? I think this is another um, Lillipathies. Yeah. These are so cool. It almost looks like it would be like Norella from a distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at those oh. two tangled up ophiroids. Or or it's I guess they're not tangled. Oh, it's a meat cute. <laughs> it's a meat cute. Oh, yeah. Because look, their little their little segments in the middle look like hearts. Oh. Yeah. oh, you're right. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> the one on the this left is, is very good. extra. 
We have two hours left. <laughs> really? <laughs> that can't, Let's keep it together. That can't be. We've been here for eight hours. Yeah. Feels like it. <laughs> the night shifts go way faster. Yeah, they mm. do. Yeah. And then, I oh, we have kippers and our kidneys. Huh. Oh, boy. Huh. Where's that one from? No, they just, yeah, they just kippers gave an answer. And kidneys, and that sounds like That's the UK, UK for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, when they, when they say kidneys, they mean the organ? The bean. I don't know. They don't mean the bean. They don't mean the bean. <laughs> <laughs> they must mean the bean. Yeah. They don't mean the bean. The oh, one yeah. Time. Not giving it the bean. this one? <laughs> no. No? Kippers and kidneys. Huh? <laughs> what is kippers and kidneys? This is like little fish and I think internal that's a organs. Dare. <laughs> yeah, that seems like for shock value, but maybe some people like it. Oh, for breakfast, three little figs is great, too. Three Saw little that. Figs. I'm already looking into it. Three what little figs. figs. Set on my doorstep. <laughs> um, do you know Aww. that dogs like reggae? Really? Supposedly. Yeah. Are you just on the internet and reading what you no, say? No, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> did you know that... <laughs> Massachusetts law enforcement hates you to know this one simple rule. <laughs> <laughs> Don't click it. Jeez. Click bait. Oh, sponge. Or what was once a sponge. Also pork roll over on the east coast. Pork roll. Pork, pork roll. roll. Pork roll. Yeah, that was a that's a New Jersey thing that I learned going over there. Is oh, that like sausage the roll? New, yeah, yeah roll. like New Zealand salty, sausage roll, salty or? kind of like yeah sausage. Does it have bread on the outside? Yeah. No. no oh, oh is it literally just pork? Just, yeah, salted pork. Just pork. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, kippers are smoked fish. Yeah, kidneys, yeah. organs. Organs. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. You can have empanadas for breakfast, too. They're really good. <gasps> and you can fill them with whatever you, you want. For antipathies. I'd say uh, over in Hawaii, guava chiffon pancakes. Oh, oh stop it. What Come is that? On. Wait, guava what? Guava chiffon pancakes. Uh, explain. No one's eating that. It's so that's, delicious. That's for <laughs> fancy people. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have eat something with names sh with chiffon um. in it. <laughs> Come on. Wow. If you, uh, if you are contemplating having diabetes or not. Uh. Uh, the sausage roll reminded me of pepperoni roll. Really big in West Virginia. Very delicious. What's that? Ooh, pepperoni, pepperoni roll. roll. Pepperoni. Get them in different. Can flavors. you give me a, like a little description? Pepperoni inside bread. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes with cheese, sometimes not. Like a calzone, but with simpler toppings. Very oh, good. Like right. a, a I don't like that. I'm seeing yeah. it here. Oh, it looks good. I once flew to the ship from West Virginia to Honolulu and packed those. Well, that's not true. West Virginia to North Carolina, maybe, and then. And, and that was my like, lunch. Can you zoom on this? I think that's delicious. staropathies. Which are we one? At? This one? What? The yellow. 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 <laughs> okay, that move is done. Do we want to, let me see, before I offer suggestions. Zig, zig, zig. 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 <laughs> We're ready to zig. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. Annie sounds different. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, my gosh. Um, actually, I, this is probably a plexoid. Yeah. Okay. With um, anemone? Is, is oh, it, oh, yeah, with an anemone. Ooh. Adam, can you look at high back? This is where we'd be zigging to. If we do one more step. Yeah, another step. Another step, great. Is that a 50? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Oh, are we now? upping our average? No. No. <laughs> <Just> wow. <laughs> Negative. <No. laughs> Maybe, but zero it doesn't five matter. Five zero meters. Uh, 
Zero three zero. I mean, look at her depth. We must have crossed all of this, and this is like a thirty meter What's going on there? vertical. Can you zoom in, Dave? What? Gold? What? It has like gold flakes on it. That's what? just what silly. Do you want to eat gold? Mm -hmm. Why would anyone want? Is it, is it that? healthy to eat gold? I <laughs> I, I, I know, right? And I don't then think they it's said unhealthy. these are. This is like edible. It depends how pure the gold I don't is. Know. Good question. Pure gold probably just go right through you. It's pretty inert. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And then chat also wants to know about um, the, the powdery rock. The powdery um, rock. What happened? How was the sampling? Yeah, the powdery rock, um, you know, we don't have all the tools out here to fully describe it. Mm -hmm. But to me, I'm thinking it's made up of uh, four manifera shells. Um, That's crazy. So it's very fine grained uh, white material that kind of comes off as like fine sand but if you look at the individual grains they have the kind of shape of four m shells you know kind of oh really uh, you lumpy can see that. yeah and is that calcium carbonate yeah i mean there can be other uh, materials that four m's use but mostly calcium carbonate yeah <coughs> bridge nav Was 290 okay? Okay, great. Let's do another 30 meters, 290. Is it pretty solid? Mm -hmm. It's not fragile. Cause it, it, it it's friable, which means it, it crumbles. Oh, okay. Friable. Friable. F R I A B L E. So it's just sort of like diatomaceous earth? Yeah. Yeah, very much. You don't see it in the garden supply, though. <laughs> we could take some home and see how it works. I wonder how my garden's doing. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder how my plants are doing. <laughs> Anna, if you're watching, um, let me know in the chat. How are my cacti? <laughs> and then, Anna, go to Cape Cod and tell me how my garden's doing. <laughs> Can't you, like, ask your family? Oh, yeah, I should ask them. That would be more <laughs> I might cancel that, Anna. <laughs> Plus, they might not like a stranger like working in the backyard. <laughs> Just you know, checking. checking out your <laughs> cucumbers. Checking the car. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we stop, I'm going to reset the DVL. So, do all the research vessels? Um, coordinators um, get together annually to say, oh, we're going to explore this part, and this other research vessel, vessel is going to go. Is this like a coordinated effort between research vessels in the United States? Uh, no. But mm -hmm. there are, so there's an organization called UNALS, which stands for United, oh wait. Uh, University. University. National Oceanographic something something. Anyway, <laughs> they operate 
a bunch of research. <laughs> University yeah. National. Ocean Labs or Ocean Labs? That sounds right. University system. National Oceanographic Laboratory, Laboratory system. system. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, they operate. They're, they're a kind of coordinating organization for a bunch of different operators, uh, like university operators, oh. and they do coordinate, but in a kind of different way. They're not like, go to this part of the ocean or that. They're like, we have all of these projects that need to be executed. They require these, this size vessel and this kind of vehicle, and then they try and put the, all the puzzle pieces together. Oh. And then an independent organization like Nautilus or Schmidt or um, NOAA, they have their own scheduling process. And there are definitely times where ships end up in the same place. Oh, um, that's interesting. But Nautilus as a, or OET as an organization, you know, has, has a kind of holistic view of their own schedule and, and projects and say, we're going to move kind of in this direction to be the most efficient kind of thing. So how does the OECI fit into that whole? So the scheme? OECI is. Um, what does it stand for, Adam? OECI stands for Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, and it's one of uh, 15 or so cooperative institutes that NOAA supports, and it's a way for NOAA to have a kind of direct interface with the academic community to help uh, achieve kind of shared oh, goals okay. and missions. And so the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute uh, includes University of Rhode Island, Ocean Exploration Trust, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, University of New Hampshire, and University of Southern Mississippi. And we collectively, as a group, um, work on projects that are aligned with NOAA's mission. So in the case of this expedition, it is going out and collecting ocean exploration data, but in others it is developing new technologies to uh, Im improve the way that we explore the oceans, or wow. it's reaching out and engaging with students and, and the public and that kind of thing. So it's really cool to, because all of those organizations have, you know, expertise that they can bring to the table and we put them all together. It's, it's a really powerful combination. Very amazing how they balance all of those priorities. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, an ongoing dialogue basically all the time to, uh, you know, priorities evolve and, and opportunities arise and, and how do we all work together to achieve the best outcome. Really interesting. Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm. going on down here? Any reason why we're <laughs> stopped? We're just getting in a position as we turned. Gotcha. As we zig. Zigged. Zigged. Speaking of corals, um, chat is wondering how do they reproduce and can they grow everywhere? Or do they need some kind of soil or rock to grow on? Corals um, spawn, so they release gametes into the water column. Um, they are hermaphroditic, so they produce um, both uh, male and female gametes. Um, they can also, like... Sorry, what's a gamete? It's not, is it a sperm and an egg together? No. They're separate? separate. Mm. So a, a sperm is a gamete and an egg is a gamete? Yeah. Okay. So it's a general term for whatever those things reproductive are. Reproductive cells? Reproductive yeah. cells? Yeah. Unfertilized then, reproductive mm -hmm. cells. Then you get this zygote. Zygote is the fertilized. Zygote, yeah, right? yeah. Yep. And then the larvae develops in the water column. Um, yeah, so it can either be um, between one coral or it can be between... Um, different corals, so they all release gametes into the water column at the same time, and then these fertilized cells develop and 
drift through the water column and settle on rock or sediment. Um, and those that settle in places where they can grow and mm -hmm. sort of anchor to something. So a hard sediment, unless you're a, um, a sea pen, in which case soft sediment is fine. Um, yeah, and then coral are also colonial. And so they um, begin dividing cell division. Um, and they, they create cells that are genetically identical. They form um, polyps, and then a skeleton forms. Okay, and so I got a couple questions. In. Are coral larvae cute? Um, let's say yes. Okay, and do we think that there are any cues for settlement that they're, they're taking advantage of? I think it has to do with how developed the larvae is in the water column. And then it's sort of maybe random where they end up, but the ones that like end up in like a suitable place are the ones that will survive and grow. Mm -hmm. um, and then in shallow water corals, they'll obtain this um, algae symbiont, zooxanthellae. Um, and those three components are what make up a coral, the most often calcium carbonate skeleton, the coral animal, the polyp, and the symbiont. Um, deep sea corals don't have this algae symbiont. They have bacterial associates. Um, chemosynthesis may play a role in the health of the coral, um, but there's not there's not enough research in this area to say definitively if that's what's happening. Although they have found that um, certain bacteria are associated with um, certain species of coral. You want to get farther from the ship or keep moving? Robert. Onwards. Bridge, Nav. We can add uh, three zero meters to this. Oh, we're zero. zooming. Turbo. <laughs> and this is about our, uh, thank you, Jules. Um, and this is about our ROVs. What would um, happen if Hercules completely failed? How would you retrieve it? Or does it have some inbuilt system for surfacing in the event of a problem? assuming it is quite expensive to replace. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Sounds like a Robert question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, failed? You mean like we lose power through the failed? Sure. Yeah. I'll yeah, start there. So it's, it's slightly positive. It's like buoyant. So it would float up. And what we would do is go into what we call tow mode. Right and just get a little head on the ship so that her toes behind uh, Atalanta. And then we would just come up slowly so that they stay roughly in the same plane. And then we have what we call dead dead boat recovery. Dead oh. vehicle. Dead vehicle recovery. Boat stays alive. Yeah, dead vehicle recovery. Not much. Yeah. And it looks pretty much exactly the same as a normal recovery, but there's just not power to the vehicles. Yeah. A little more tuggy. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not able to drive the vehicles closer to the ship or farther from the ship and position them for recovery. So we have to do that positioning with the ship moving, keep the vehicles streaming out behind for a safe recovery. So um, Hercules would float to the top, correct? Uh, yeah, as long as the, the main cable is still attached to Atalanta. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. So when y'all, I'm just thinking in the future in Sentry, uh, when you all had Sentry on before, I'm just thinking you really got to have good control 
of the ship, you know, to come alongside. Because yeah. you can't tug on anything to pull Sentry but closer. I think they they can control Sentry with a oh with, the with a remote control, yeah. 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 So they they drive Sentry to the ship. Okay. So. What if Sentry loses power? Well, then you would not have that capability. You'd probably <laughs> you know, yeah. put a small boat in and hook yeah, a line you could to do it. That. Yeah. Once a small boat. Get the soap on a rope. I mean that's the same idea with if we have. Uh, or Valentacum. Or uh, jelly. Uh, Actually, I think that was Drix. A Right. If it loses the power, kit? then they send the. They have a boat to go out and get it. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a. Oh gosh, what are they called? They're pelagic gelatinous animal that uh, one of our science interns did a paper on a couple of years ago. Uh, I want to say sea butterfly, but that's not it. Um, sea. But there's a thing angel? as a sea butterfly. Tuna four. No. Pteropod. Uh, not a pod. What? Was it a sea butterfly? I will say that AUVs have a tendency to to get lost a lot more. Oh. Than ROVs. Yeah, because they're not so attached. Yeah, I've rescued a couple of them. Was there a time when, like? You couldn't find the AUV at all? Yeah, yeah. I think they've lost quite what? a few of them. Oh, wow. I mean, ever? I, I know there's been times where we spent, you know, six hours looking. Oh. Yeah. I, but I think they've gotten better at, uh, you know, the satellite comms on them and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It used to be like, okay, it came up here. The current's going this way. <laughs> Bridge, no? If you look at the... The gliders that are out there now, just where they're sending gliders these days. Um, there's been a number of gliders that we get lost. We can add uh, three zero meters to two nine zero. End up underneath rocks or. Uh, yeah, I had to rescue the Ambari <coughs> AUV, and it it had actually gone into a hole, and it's a torpedo-shaped <laughs> AUV, oh, and wow. it was sticking in the hole, <laughs> but it's still sticking up. I don't know how that happened, but. It was pretty wow. odd. Wow, that's a new one. <laughs> we had to go rescue Abe. Yeah, uh, it got tangled. It got in tangled some up gear. In, uh, in some lines. That's a that's a biggie. We've been entangled in fishing gear before. Minesweeper, sorry. There was another minesweeper. An Atalanta cam. We've had to recover the vehicles with fishing gear attached to them. Oh, wow. End up with a six foot high pile of line and wow. fishing floats and everything. Yikes. Fed uh, AUVs get stuck underneath ice shelves before. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's putting yourself in harm's way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, there's a fish. Fish? Ooh. Tripod. Zoom in, Dave.
That one seems like it has quite a lot of sensing gear on the front of it, you know? Right. And kind of tiny eyes, too. Probably those things are related. So what do tripod fish eat? Crustaceans? Eat, 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 eat. Oh, okay. Zooplankton, crustaceans. They face into the direction of water movement, staying still and waiting for food to arrive. Wow. Found my name, just... Nice. Like they could wait for like five hours. Yeah. In one place. Oof. <clears throat> That's patience. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that gelatinous animal we saw like twenty minutes ago. Ten minutes ago. Yeah. Five minutes ago. <laughs> uh, I think it was a Pelagotheria. Oh. Uh, I have it open on the Pelagotheria. Oh, yeah, I've seen cool. those before. Yeah. I knew that intern. She was a previous APPMSI scholar with the same mentor. Oh, oh that's awesome. Yeah. Um, she was the one that told me about the Nautilus program. That's so great. Back then. Uh, her name is. Gina. Gina. Gina Selig. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, that was in That's 2019. Awesome. I thought she just published it, but the years between 2019 and now are <laughs> <laughs> blur. <laughs> you want to get out in front of the ship or just keep moving? Keep going. Keeping it going. Bridge nav. We can add three zero meters to two nine zero. Oh, oh Zoom Hermie. In, Dave. <laughs> He's trucking. Yeah. Oh wow. What's he got on his oh, back? Oh wow. Absolutely yes. booking it. Oh. oh. It's a anemone? An anemone. What? A closed up anemone. Yeah. More appropriately sized though. Yeah. Good choice. Faster than the last one we saw. Much. This one's got places to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if marine organisms <coughs> get, uh, like, desire oxygen. Like, we get thirsty, but they get, like, airy. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Winded? Winded, yes. They get winded, <laughs> we get thirsty. <laughs> You're like, drink um, eight glasses of oxygen a day. Do fish have um, automatic uh, gills? Okay, how do I express this? Like, when they breathe through their gills, yeah. is that an automatic process, like our lungs? We don't have to think about breathing. It just ha happens naturally. Or do they need to... Pump those muscles intentionally? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I guess you do see them, like, open and close their mouth, so... Um, so, the water passes over their gill slits, and then the oxygen is absorbed into absorbed. their bloodstream. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So but like moving the water over the gills, like it don't, doesn't it move, don't they suck it in and push it out over the gills? Hmm. Or do they have to, I know some sharks have to swim to be able to do that. Yeah, right, right. I don't know about fish, I mean smaller fish. Oh, look Most into it. fish use buccal pumping, which is a muscular reaction. Oh. Where they're oh. Water over their gills. So right. they do but inhale and exhale. So they can indeed be <laughs> winded. Yeah, maybe that's cool. 
Um, there's another thing I was going to ask. Oh, yeah. Uh, when we have a moment, this would be a great place for a blank eDNA sample. Sure would. Chat. Um, for the Benthic Animal Identification Guide, um, head on over to oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. Are you stopping here? Okay, let me hold That's this up. That's a guide that I use. Now. That'll be quick. Mm -hmm. So we Ocean have dot dot gov. Hold position. We have Niskin bottles available. Sample one, two, solo. three. One, two, three. What? Sample <laughs> salvo. Uh, no, we're going to do a Niskin. Okay. So we just got to pull the camera back and then All right. we'll look over here. Which one are we doing? Let's do three. Are you watching? Yeah. Yep. What the heck? Get on there. Get out of there. What is that? <laughs> Stop <laughs> playing with your Niskins. <laughs> <laughs> Paola, what um, sample number is this? Yeah, this would be sample number 131. 131, one, thank you. I think got you got it. it. Got it. Oh, there's a jelly just passed in front of us. We haven't seen that rare jelly. Yeah. Mm. It was spotted like three times, right, on this cruise yeah. so far? I think three or four times. Right. Might be a shark. It looks a little sharky. What? Shark. Please, please. Hmm. Three zero meters, two nine zero. Come back. How exciting. Come back. You zoomed in. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. Definitely okay. a shark. Greenland? Do you win all the green? <laughs> what are we looking at? I'm gonna see you. Who are you? Looks pretty cat sharky. It's like something that's attacked its spin at some point. Hmm. A dorsal fin. Or is that uh, a parasite? Yeah, that's a. Looks like a. Oh no, it looks like a scar. Hard to say. There was a study with some type of fish and mirrors and beta fish. They um no. No. But they could tell if like they had a parasite, like after looking in these mirrors. No, really? They like responded to it. Huh. Interesting. So smart. I think those are a lot of astro schema. No, no, we're talking on the camera. Oh. A little scratchy. Are you talking about the battle scars? Yeah. Huh. Battle scars. Battle scars. Huh. All right. Or is it goop? <laughs> I think it's goop. <laughs> it's hard to tell. That's optimistic. It, it looks a lot like the other goop on the porch. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> too. No, that's those are scratches. I don't know. Let's we'll see what we get. That's, that's why, why that's why you have a hood. There, there. we go, that's yeah. <laughs> <coughs> 
Looking at pictures of um, coffee shops is almost as good as being there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which ones are you looking at? Cicada Coffee Bar in Cambridge. So good. <laughs> Do we want to look at these? It's torturous. No, those are from Noah's, yeah? From Noah's from also. Noah's. Actually, yes, I would like to look at that because I Zoom think it there. is a black coral. Ooh. And it might be Lilipathies. Oh, I think you're right. Oh, the other one is called Taylor Ham. Or Tailored Ham. Tailored Ham? Yeah, depending upon where you're at in New Jersey, it's tailored either Tailored Ham, ham or Pork <laughs> Roll. <It's a laughs> tailored I'm Ham. I'm probably going to get a lot of uh, comments about you don't know your East Coast foods. <laughs> I don't. I'm still trying. Um, I don't know. I guess this is Lilipathies. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Um. On the East Coast, you can get tasty cakes. Tasty Ooh. cakes? Yep. What are tasty cakes? I need what to. What flavors? I'm all this. On so in the northwest, you can get oyster hash. That's really good. Oyster hash. Oyster hash. It's like corned beef hash, but made with oysters. That oysters so are what? a more sustainable meat option. True. Ooh. So Can oysters, we have tasty clams. <laughs> <laughs> what are tasty cakes? Tasty yeah, cakes are like uh, are like Hostess uh, cakes, oh, yeah. but, oh, but yeah. East Coast. Okay. And, oysters uh, are what? Not whoopie pies. <laughs> Folks from the East Coast say they're far superior to Hostess, but I <laughs> can't tell the difference. Hmm. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to rescind my previous ID. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is Trisopathies. <laughs> no worries. Not this. Thank you. But no, uh, the other prior. thing. Okay. That's a Rudigorgia yeah. Magnus Paralis with a crinoid topper. Yeah, tree topper. So we're changing from lily patties to trisopathies. Trisopathies. Noted. Thank you. And then, what are some organisms that we have seen that are feeding on corals? We have seen a lot of fly trap mm. um, anemones. We've seen sea stars. Um, not necessarily feeding on corals, but zoanthids and hydrozoans sort of take over coral skeletons. That's more for like, it's sort of like an optimal habitat for them because there's increased flow. Um, what else eats corals? Uh, jellyfish are known to eat coral. Uh, we've seen the mollusk worms. Oh yeah, apocophorans. Um, Amphipods, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a pretty exhaustive list. Um, a lot of corals have uh, astroschema. Zoom in, Dave. Uh, Ophiroids. <coughs> but those are not eating them. And mm, crinoids okay. are not eating them. And yeah. These uh, zoanthids are still in the fruit. Yeah, these are zoanthids. So, like, the zoanthids aren't, like, eating this coral, per se. They're just using it for its structure. I think that one's a sponge. Ooh, that rock looked like a shark. <laughs> Where? <laughs> oh, it was a we rock? It. Oh, yeah, it was a rock. We're at that part of the watch. <laughs> things look like things. <laughs> We're like looking at clouds. <laughs> Ooh, and then, um, so, okay, we have a, a statement and question 
Uh, so regarding losing sediment from cores, last December, Dr. Ballard commented on getting core catchers for your push cores. Is this a technological barrier for HERC? Uh, it's not really a technological barrier. Mm. <coughs> it is kind of a pain in the neck because that means there's <coughs> a bunch of additional steps to assembling the the core. Right. Um, and more and, you gotta and a prim note get the, the core catcher out in order to extrude the core. Um, but it's it's totally doable. It's just that there's enough times where it's where you can collect a core that you gotta weigh the additional effort for a core catcher. But what he what he wanted was <coughs> also was uh, box cores. Right, so those yeah, have okay. a built-in uh, kind of core catching system. So the problem with the box core is it's really huge and heavy, and you got to use a lot of force to get one in. So right, this looks like a bolosoma, and then <coughs> lilypathies. That's not trisopathies. Probably lilypathies. And a chrysogorgid, and kind I don't know if that other one is here. also. Can we pause for a sec? I think what we really need on the cores is better, okay. better lids on them that seal better. Ah, oh, okay. Guess not. Um, primnoid and a Victor gorgid. So we we test the tube cores by you stick them in a bucket full of water. And then if you can lift the core out and keep the water in, you know, right? Then that's a good, that's a good valve on it. It's like when you put your tip of your finger over the straw and pull it out of oh, the drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But then you get some sediment in the rubber flap and or whatever. You know, sometimes the rubber bands that hold them in will get under the rubber flap and then. And then, unless the mud's really sticky, it just falls out. So, Adam, here's the angle that we'll have if we, oops, if we uh, start zagging now. That looks good. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Onwards. So it really depends a lot on the texture of the sediment, whether it's going to bridge nav, hold in, or just fall out. Okay. Let's try three zero meters two nine zero. And then uh, regarding our expedition, what is our overall goal? Well, the, the broad goal is exploration. So right. we want to, we're visiting an area or areas that no one has ever been to before. So we'd like to know what's there. Uh, but that generally takes the form of looking at the organisms that are there and, and kind of characterizing the ecosystems. Um, sampling the geology to understand the kind of geological history of the region and then within those we try and be somewhat systematic uh, working in different depth Zoom ranges um, and and sampling from different features in right. order to you know produce the most complete set of information or knowledge about this area that we can in a in a single visit And then there's lots of different end users for that kind of information. There's the, this region of course is nominated uh, to become a marine, national marine sanctuary. Right. So the information will be helpful for that. Uh, there's a scientific community that's looking at the biogeography throughout this region. There's uh, geologists trying to learn about earth history and the movement of tectonic plates that, that will be um, 
kind of helping with our information. So there's lots of ways this information will get used. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm such a friend. Two nine zero is our new bearing. Two nine zero. Two nine zero. We're starting That's our zigzag. That's exciting. We're going into the potential crevasse. Any expectations of what we think we'll see, or is it about the same? Uh, uh <coughs> you know, it could be a supervillain's lair. Mm. Right. That's uh, that's true. But I'm expecting more. Uh, of what we were seeing before on the, the slope as we were coming up here, which was cool. There was a lot of coral, a lot of flow. I feel like that coral was a trisopathies. We zoom in, Dave. This was a while ago. Trisopathies and parentopathies look really similar. That's a tall, crease gorgia. Geniculata. So delicate. <laughs> so, a lot of stuff down here still has eyes, even though they're not of much use, huh? That's true. Yeah. Or maybe they are. Maybe they're sensitive to light, but they don't fully see. Mm-hmm. Us, us. Wonder why that is. Oh, that's a cool uh, C pen there. Oh yeah. Can we zoom on that to the in the bottom left? There are animals who produce their own light down here. So. Yeah, there is oh, some right, bioluminescence. Right. Zoomed in. Oh, that is a C pen. It is a cophobalemnon. Say what? Cophobalemnon. Cophobalemnon. Mm -hmm. Noted. Thank you. Tough name. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk about our uh, American breakfast of donuts. That's one what? of the suggestions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chat did mention that donuts. So true. I did not know that was a breakfast. Really? <laughs> no, <laughs> Dunkin' <laughs> Donuts. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Is it like the normal donuts, or do you have flavors? Put stuff oh, yeah, there's flavors. I've seen flavors. There are many flavors. It's become uh, also kind of a trendy artisanal food. So yeah. you'll get like oh. a, you know, Lavender and uh, you know umami <laughs> donut or something like <laughs> that. Umami <laughs> donut. Fancy. Yeah, you have some I bougie think that's donuts. Wrong, and I think it's better to stick with the basics. They even have like bougie <laughs> donuts that cost like two hundred dollars because it has.